To me, this is his role. That the, he's, he's talking about goggles, you know. And everybody's got a set of goggles. Everybody thinks his own set was given to him by God and is universal, natural, and supposed to be. And what he's saying, he says, just for a minute, think of the possibility that maybe your set of goggles is, is a private, idiosyncratic set of goggles. And suppose that, that the generation before had a different set of goggles, and you got this set of goggles, and you both think you're looking at it the same way, and you're not. If I'm sitting on the beach, and I open my eyes, I suddenly see before me the sea, the waves, I can feel the breeze on my face, I can hear the seagulls in the distance. It seems like there's this objective world out there and it's just pouring itself into my mind through the senses. Yet, I know that's not what's going on. The signals that arrive at our eyes and our ears, the light waves that hit our retinas, the pressure waves that come into our eardrums, they don't come with labels on them, like I'm from a seagull or I'm from the sea or I'm blue. They're just ambiguous signals. The brain has to make sense of all these sensory signals and figure out where they came from and, and what they mean. That's the process of perception. So perception isn't just a reading out of the world around us, it's always a creative act of interpretation in which the brain is utilizing its knowledge about the way the world is to make its best guess of what causes the sensory signals and that, that's what we consciously perceive. So the brain has what you might call prior knowledge about the structure of the world and about what's out there that allows it to interpret the sensory signals that come in. And sometimes this prior knowledge is built deep into the structure of our brain and it's knowledge that we're not aware of having. For example, that light tends always to come from above. And that means that when we look at shadows, our brain is using that knowledge so that we interpret what shadows mean in a particular way. It's not so much I'll believe it when I see it, but if your brain believes it, then you will see it. This process is going to be a little bit different for each of us. We're all going to experience our own interpretations of even the same sensory data. And this brings up this idea of inner perceptual diversity. Now we're all familiar with the idea of external diversity. We all recognize that we're different heights, different skin colors, different shapes. And we're less familiar with the idea of inner diversity. One reason is that you can't see my experience. If you look at the blue sky, the blue that you experience might not be the same as the blue that I experience, even though we'll both call it blue. There's one example of perceptual diversity which became very well known a few years ago.